Hello and welcome. Is the city of Bombay adrift? Well, uh, Naresh Fernandez, author, writer, journalist, seems to think so. And he's written a book called City Adrift, a short biography of Bombay. And it's already been termed as angry and provocative. Naresh, thank you so much for. Uh, Do uh, I look to be angry, <laughs> Govind Raj? Yeah. So, I, I, let me admit at the outside, I haven't read it, but I intend to very shortly because Excellent. it's just come out. And buy millions of copies for your I, friends. I will try. I will try. So, uh, tell me, Naresh, you, you've taken uh, uh, history and land. And, and merged the two uh, ev sort of evolutionary trends, so to speak, and then sort of built a biography you of know, the city. Land is Bombay's central concern, and it yes. has been yeah. since uh, the inception of the city 300 years ago. Uh, city Adrift looks at the process by which Bombay was constructed physically mm. uh, from uh, reclaimed from these seven mythical islands that mm. the British are supposed to have inherited from so the Portuguese. The, there were the sort of there were probably not seven islands. Okay. Uh, it was uh, Bombay was actually in an estuary, mm. and so at times there were more, and at times there were less. But for some reason, we seem to have fixed on this island sure. uh, this notion of seven, and that's gone down in Bombay legend. And uh, there's no reason particularly to disprove it. Okay. Uh, the exact number of islands don't really make a difference. Sure. Sure. What is clear, though is that Bombay was painstakingly assembled mm. over time mm. through reclamations uh, by a colonial government, mm. but also that Bombay society was assembled in the same jigsaw-like fashion. Mm. Uh, trading cards, especially from around Western India, but from across India, were offered incentives to move to Bombay. Mm -hmm. And even international trading communities, such as the Armenians, mm. uh, were given concessions such as um, you know, uh, 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 they, 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 they were given incentives on warfage, mm. for, uh, and they were exempted from such things as not having to do watch duty. Mm. Uh, but there was a deliberation through which people were invited mm. to settle in uh, this city, which allowed it to flourish. Uh, the notion and, and, and oh. sort of led, led it to become the commercial capital that led we now it to call become it. the the, yeah. the commercial capital, but also uh, the notion uh, sort of Bombay had always been set up with the notion that commerce was one part of what made a city flourish, and that commerce needed to be regulated, mm. uh, and that you know it couldn't be unbridled, mm. and that uh, both the the physical city. Uh, which they did quite badly, uh, b b they did a quite bad job of, of regulating the city physically, mm. but that commercially also, that there needed to be rules by which everybody played. Mm -hmm. um, and the book goes on to talk about how over the last 20 years with liberalization, Bombay is now fragmenting again into gated communities, to enclaves of the rich, but also into uh, ghettos uh, that are dominated by people of specific communities. Um, is that a defensive uh, thing? Is that what you're saying? I don't know if it's defensive. It's sort of forces have been unleashed mm. that makes the rich want to board themselves away, mm. uh, even though Bombay has an astonishingly low rate of crime. Mm. We have very little street crime very few break-ins. So is it boarding themselves uh, away for a higher quality of infrastructure or is it to do with security as you seem to suggest? It has nothing to do with security mm. unlike places like Sao Paulo mm. or Johannesburg. Mm. I think it has to do again with the process that I, be, I see as the islanding of the mind. Mm. That Bombay's elite mm. and to be fair most middle class and upper class people are actually elite mm. uh, just want to dissociate themselves from uh, the things around them. I think this is one of the problems of globalization, that we imagine that we belong to some sort of global community mm -hmm. and have seceded our responsibilities to the people around us. Over the last 20 years uh, since liberalization, the number of people living in slums in Bombay has doubled. Mm. Uh, now about 48% of people in Bombay live in slums. That's an astonishingly uh, ridiculous mm, number. That's internal migration, right? I mean, Whatever it is, yeah. the fact is that we pride ourselves on being among uh, India's richest cities. Delhi is a little more affluent than we are. For being the city of, op of opportunity, and we cannot provide dignified housing for the people who come here. Right. Um, the great narrative of liberalization is how uh, farming will become uh, less and less relevant for people and urbanization 
will be cons will, will, is, is the consequent process that will lead to uh, our, our prosperity increasing. But unless we can find a way to provide for the people who are being driven off the land mm -hmm. uh, and give them dignified housing in the city, I think we failed. So that's one problem. So what's this secession uh, of the mind and the body, as it were, leading to? What is it? What is the outcome of all of this? Right. So I think we have this situation now where Bombay was always a city of the public. Mm. Uh, in the in the Indian imagination, uh, you don't think of uh, Bombay's big hotels. Uh, um, wh when you think of Bombay, it's it's Marine Drive, it's the Maidans, it's the Gateway of India. India. That symbol that Shivaji says Park. "Come in." It's Shivaji Park. It's where people of all classes mm. mingled. Mm. Uh, and even if you didn't go up and hug everybody. <laughs> you had a recognition mm. that there were different kinds of people and there were negotiations uh, that developed. Um, among the great uh, uh, sort of sources of Bombay mangling mm. was, that was the, the fact that we all took the local train. Mm. Uh, and even if you travel in the first class, it wasn't that much more comfortable. Mm. But uh, we are a city that lived its life in full public view. Right. The problem with these gated communities is that uh, now we are breaking down this social contract mm. on which Bombay is based. Uh, and that's very dangerous. Right. So, but th uh, while the gated communities have come up and maybe flourish in some ways, the, the rest of the city, maybe six million people or five and a half million people continue to commute and travel in the manner that you did and perhaps engage with each other physically in close physical proximity and so on. So uh, isn't the sort of that world still continuing to exist? We are doing everything to make that world more and more difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, we are making really bad decisions. We're putting our money not into public transport, sure. but into ceilings. Mm -hmm. And that ceiling is a perfect symbol of Bombay mm. because it took uh, much longer, it took twice the amount of time mm. that it was estimated to take, mm. the cost overrun was enormous, mm. and the number of people who use it have been dropping since it started. So now about 40,000 cars use that. Six million people take the train every day. Mm. You would imagine that any society that pretended to be democratic would put its money into public transport, not into this bridge for a minuscule right. number of people. Right. And yet we're putting all our money into road projects mm -hmm. rather than to public so you're saying projects. at one level we are ignoring the the social contracts that were existed yes. in the city. At another level, our infrastructure investment is uh, lopsided because it's obviously favoring, uh, let's say, the car, uh, those the car, the owners, car owners, yes. and and uh, maybe obviously the relatively affluent. Uh, and and the third thing you're saying is that there's no thought now in as to where the city is going in future as well. So Bombay has now just become an agglomeration of uh, infrastructure projects that are slapped one into the next yeah. without people thinking about how they are all meshing into each other. Uh, you see this from the money that they are spending on public transport projects. We have one monorail, mm. uh, which is a technology that really is used only in fairgrounds in the West. It just cannot handle the volumes that we need it to run. This barely meshes into the, uh, the, the train, and we also have a metro system that sort of crosses that, and these are just not None meshing into to each other. other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you really yeah. see this um, where the metro is coming up, the first stop in four bungalows, the, it opens onto a street. It doesn't even open into, uh, into the pavement. Mm -hmm. So people would stream out into a street and cause even more chaos. When you look at the monorail at Wadala, mm. the bridge goes over uh, by two feet um, uh, 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 a house. pavement. Oh, okay. <laughs> a pavement. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I don't know uh, how these plans actually get uh, passed. I mean, Right. So what is your biggest concern, uh, Naresh? So there is, a, I mean, of this sort of smash go grad of uh, physical infrastructure, mm. and, and <laughs> visibly so. And there's the social problem. What in your mind, if, if it can be addressed, needs urgent addressal? So I conclude by saying uh, that uh, for a city to flourish, we need common ground on which to make common cause. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's disappearing sure. here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're losing the spaces in which Bombayites of all classes mm. will meet and talk and hammer out mm. uh, a new social contract.
Right. And and uh, are you writing a sequel to this? Is, you said this is one of many books. Is that are the rest going to be yours? Oh, no, the the rest are, are, are people who live in different cities. Uh, okay. And so the focus of each of these books in the series depends on that writer's particular, uh, particular concerns. Right. Um, as a journalist, these were my concerns. Right, Nanesh. Thank you so much, and all the best for your book. Thank you. Thank you.